So, this is going to be about the witch at Endor. Now, David said in his heart, one day I'm going to die by the hand of Saul. But he'd been assured many times that he would not be killed by Saul. Samuel had told him that he was going to be king. So you see, even a faithful man like David, sometimes he's strong in faith, sometimes he was weak, and that's like all of us. So, but he never died of the hand of Saul. He died of old age. That's right. But he was frightened that Saul would kill him. Mm. So, it's in a weak point of his life, and he said, there's nothing better for me than that I should escape into the land of the Philistines, and then Saul will give up chasing me. And the witch wouldn't be actually true. Cause no, the witch isn't actually true, but we'll come to that a bit later. But he does, but David does have a reason to be scared of Saul. Because he almost, remember up at the mountain, he, he almost, almost caught ran. him, yeah. So that's right, he did have reason to be scared of Saul. So he decides to go into the land of the Philistines. Now, of course, Goliath was a Philistine, and he killed Goliath. And he killed lots of Philistines, hundreds of them. So David and the 600 men who were with him went to Achish, who was the king of Gath. Now, Goliath was from Gath. So why did he go to Gath? Didn't he know where Gath was? Well, yes, he did, but I guess he thought that he would be safer with the Philistines than he would be in Israel, hunted by Saul. Well, he wasn't hunted down by the Philistines, was he? Well, apparently not, no, because they allow him to live there. So David lived with Achish at Gath with his men, each of them with their families. David had with him his two wives, Ahinoam from Jezreel and Abigail, Nabal's former wife, from Carmel. When Saul was told that David had run away to Gath, he stopped searching for him. David said to Achish, the Philistine, the king of Gath, If I found favour in your eyes, please give me a place in one of the cities in the countryside to live in. Why should I live in the royal city with you, the king? So Achish gave him Ziklag to live in. David lived in the country of the Philistines for a year and four months. David and his men went and attacked the Geshurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites. These were inhabitants of the land from ancient times. David attacked the land and didn't save either man nor woman alive. He took away their sheep, cattle, donkeys, camels, and everything, and then used to go back to Achish. And Achish would ask him, Who did you attack today? And David would say, I, I attacked the south of Judah. In other words, he was trying to make Achish think that he'd gone and attacked his own people, even though that wasn't true. So that's why David didn't allow even a man or woman or child to survive, unless they were to tell the news to Achish. Achish so believed David. He would let them live if they would tell him. Yeah, that actually David hadn't been attacking the Israelites, he'd been attacking these other tribes. So Achish believed David, thinking that the Israelites now hate him so much and he'll be my servant forever, thinking that David had been going and attacking and killing Israelites. In those days the Philistines gathered together to fight against Israel and Achish said to David, well you must go out in the army, you and your men, and fight the Israelites. Mm. Mm. So you see, being dishonest and telling lies never really works out, because now David was in a very difficult situation. So, but doesn't he turn around and kill the Philistines? No, let's read on. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah. And Saul had chased out of Israel those who were wizards and witches. So the Philistines came and gathered together to fight against Saul. And Saul and his army gathered in, in Gilboa. But when Saul saw the huge army of the Philistines, he was frightened. When Saul prayed to God, God did not answer him, not by dreams, nor by the prophets, nor by the Urim on the breastplate. Well, doesn't he 
Or does he think that David's army is part of the... Philistine's army, yep. So that means that it would be <clears throat> as big as... Well, bigger than normal, bigger than usual. That's right. I mean, yep. it would be huge, huge, very huge. In, in the end... The leaders of the Philistine army said, no, we're not going to have David with us. He's the one who killed Goliath. So actually, in the end, David's going to get out of this by God's grace. But now we're back with Saul, who's terribly frightened, and God is not answering him. So Saul said to his servants, find me a woman who is a witch so that I can go and ask her what's going to happen. His servants said to him, there is a woman who is a witch at Endor. Saul disguised himself, putting on other clothing, and went with two men to the woman by night. Now remember that Saul was the tallest man in Israel, and everybody knew him. And so trying to disguise himself was not really going to help. But he didn't want the lady to know that he was Saul, though I'm sure that she knew it was Saul all along. So Saul disguised himself and went with two men to this witch at Endor by night, and he said to her, Please bring me up the person who I tell you. But the lady said to him, Don't you know that Saul has killed all those who are witches and chased them out of the land? Why then have you set a trap for me to make me die? Saul promised her by Yahweh, As Yahweh lives, you will not be punished for this. Now, of course, the only person who could truly promise, I'm not going to kill you for doing this, is Saul himself. So I think she surely knew this was Saul. So the woman said to him, Whom do you want me to bring up to you? He said, Bring Samuel up for me. Now the Bible teaches that when we're dead, we're dead and unconscious. And so Samuel was dead, back in the dust, and that was all there was to him. But desperately Saul wanted to see Samuel. Well, he thought that maybe the witch could somehow bring Samuel back to life. When the woman saw Samuel, she screamed and said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You're Saul. Now the fact that she screamed shows to me that she was really frightened. Because actually, Samuel really did appear. Now normally these witches would have said, Oh yes, I, 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 see, uh, I see your relative who died. Yes, yes, he looks like this. And they'd have been rather deceptive. But... She screamed because actually God, I think, resurrected Samuel. Saul said to the woman, don't be frightened, what do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see someone, something like a god coming up out of the earth. Saul said to her, what does he look like? She said, an old man is coming up wearing a mantle. Saul realized that it was Samuel and he bowed with his face to the ground and showed respect. Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me in bringing me up? Now, Saul and Samuel have the conversation with each other, <clears throat> not through the witch, which is what normally happened in this kind of thing. So it shows that actually Samuel was really resurrected, and he actually met Saul, and that's why Saul bows with his face to the ground as he meets Samuel. Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul replied, Well, I'm very distressed. The Philistines are attacking me, and God has left me. He doesn't answer me, not by prophets, nor by dreams, so I call you so that you can tell me what I ought to do. Samuel said, Why do you ask me, since Yahweh has departed from you and has become your enemy? What an awful thing to have to hear that God is your enemy. God has done to you, Samuel continued, as he spoke by me. God has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, to David. Because you didn't obey God and did not execute his fierce anger on Amalek. That's why God has done this to you today. Now you see, although God is very patient and very gracious, we cannot just think that we can ignore God and that we can ignore his commandments. Saul did not do what God asked him to do, and so God was angry with him. And that's why Samuel says, this is why this situation has come upon you. God is going to deliver Israel and you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. That is, in the grave. So it shows that good people like Samuel and bad people like Saul go to the same place when they die. It's not true that when you die, 
The good people go to heaven and the bad people go to a place called hell. In the Bible, hell is the grave. And we don't go to heaven when we die. The hope of the Bible is that Jesus will come back and resurrect the dead, those who are responsible to him. The wicked will be punished and will die, the second death. And we who have believed in God and in Jesus will live forever in resurrected bodies. Samuel continued, And God will also deliver the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Saul immediately fell down, his full length on the earth, and was terrified because of the words of Samuel. So again, Samuel was talking directly to Saul. It wasn't through the witch. Samuel really had been resurrected. There was no strength in him, for he had eaten no food all that day and night. The woman came to Saul, and seeing that he was very troubled, she said to him, Look, your servant has obeyed you, and I have put my life in my hands, and have done what you told me. Now please listen to your servant, and let me please give you some food, so that you may eat and have the strength to go on your way. But he refused and said, I will not. I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, urged him, so he listened to them. He got up from the earth and sat on the bed. The woman had a fattened calf in the house. She hurried and killed it, took flour, kneaded it, and baked unleavened bread with it. She brought it before Saul and his servants, and they ate, and they got up and went away that night. So, you see, in the end, what happens to someone who does not obey God? In the end, it all catches up with you. And I'm going to read on how, in the end, the Philistines do kill Saul and his sons, including Jonathan, and they all fall down dead on Mount Gilboa. But, but Jim, I mean, Jonathan was a good... He helped right. David. Why does God let him die? Well, I suppose we could say that we're all going to die sometime anyway. Well, yes, but couldn't Jonathan die of old age? Yeah, I suppose you could say that because for us, we think that it's really important to live for as long as you can. But when we're in the kingdom, we'll realize that we were just given the time in this life that we needed. And the greatest thing is that we're in the kingdom. So Jonathan will be in the kingdom. And that's the most important thing, that Jonathan is in the kingdom, or will be in the kingdom. And I think you also learn from this that people suffer because of other people's actions. All the Israelites died or were killed, all because of Saul. I would like to ask if I'm in the kingdom... How Jonathan... Why it happened like that. Yes. Yes, well I think that's one of the things I look forward to about being in the kingdom, that then we will understand. Then we can talk to the people that, that we read about. Yes, although well, no, I don't suppose I'll be talking to Saul. Oh, no. Um, but then we will understand, and the whole struggle that we have but is... we could talk to his son, though. Yeah. And the whole struggle that we have with understanding whether God is just, whether God is fair, will then be resolved. Then we will understand. Now we have to believe. We have to accept that by faith. Although it's difficult and it's a challenge to our faith. But when Jesus comes back, then we will have God's nature and we will see things as he does.